Listen, everyone. I've got some theories so interesting they just might bring you glee. But first you'll have to follow me into a realm of tricks and treats and fiends. That's right, tis the season, well, tis always the season on this spooky channel, for yet another dive into some Nightmare Before Christmas lore and theories to tantalize your brain, too. Our Lock, Shock, and Barrel the most terrifying being in all of Halloween Town? Or are they just mortal chaos incarnate? Are they one being with three conscious manifestations? Or <laughs> what? Yeah. Or something a bit closer to home? Let's play with a few fun concepts to figure out just what they are. And if you like these types of overwrought, overthought, spooky animated lore dives, give yourself a gift and treat. Subscribe to the channel today. That way you'll get the newest creepy things fresh out of the cauldron. <laughs> Lock, Shock, and Barrel are really unique to me because they don't seem to quite fit in with the rest of Halloween Town in a certain sense. Some of the residents there are quite obviously dead. Looking at you, ghosts, corpse mom, dad, and kid, and Halloween Town is their limbo-esque afterlife. Most of the other citizens are the traditional spooky monsters we know and love. We've got werewolves, vampires, swamp creatures, skeletons, understairs and bed monsters, devils, witches, and on and on. I'm not so certain they're in Halloween Town because they've died, but more so because they are spooky still mortal and or undead souls and Halloween Town is where they choose to reside. I mean, why not? It's perfect. Enter in Lock, Shock, and Barrel, who it's easy to assume are dead and now linger at the age they passed, but spookier. Ooh. But I'm not so sure. Let's play Alive or Not, Departed Fiend or Mortal Edition. First up, Locke, who looks like he could have froze to death judging by his cold-looking blue lips. Or he could be a real-life devil and not dead with his spiky hair horns and is that a real tail or part of a costume? Well, that leads us to his other layer of identity with the devil masking costume. So the results are undecided. We could say that poor old Beryl, who seems to be the guinea pig in a lot of dangerous tricks, died as a result of these same type of tricks in his previous life. I'm not exactly sure what traditional spooky thing he's supposed to be. And he dresses as a skeleton, but he has a permanent creepy grin, sunken eyes, and manic panic green hair, so he kind of exists on the edge of all three. Afterlife dweller, unknown creepy spooky, and maybe mortal. And then, of course, we've got Clever Shock, who I think got her cooler than stock name, hang on, we'll get there, because she either is a young witch who dabbles in lightning magicka spells, is she a weather witch, or just likes to dress like one. Maybe an experimenter potion went wrong, sending her to an early demise, but she doesn't strike me as one who passed and doesn't quite fit the afterlife mold. So this whole game is kind of a bust, but we need it for reference later in the video. There is one possibility that could explain why the devious trio Lock, Shock, and Barrel are not only so close, but also so singly devoted to the chaos that is Oogie Boogie. And for that we again need to look at what traditional boogeymen or sack men did, which is wait around to the dead of night and capture misbehaving children, throw them into a sack, take them somewhere, do whatever Lock, Shock, and Barrel sing about doing to Sandy Claus or you know just off them. Now, as discussed in this previous video right here, Oogie Boogie is an anti-traditional boogeyman. He has some backstory that's filled in by all the Nightmare Before Christmas video games. But to keep it simple, maybe if slash when Oogie Boogie made the transition from real world to holiday realm life, he also changes the nature to be more bug focused instead of child focused. And also maybe there are not that many kids to nap in Halloween Town on a nightly basis, so bugs it is. But regardless, what if Oogie Boogie in his pre-Halloween Town traditional Sackman life captured Lock, Shock, and Barrel and, um, ended it for them, if you think Halloween Town is inhabited by the dead, or just took them with him, if you think anything spooky can choose to reside in the town? And then they, as a matter of course, develop this warped, parasitic, fear-based, but still need to impress Oogie Boogie and stay on his good side relationship. Now, getting back to their single-mindedness when it comes to chaos. Maybe a clue is in the phrase their names are derived from. Lock, stock, and barrel is a loaded <laughs> phrase that came about around 1817, so you know, super new and trendy. The phrase itself is a merism, or that's a linguistic phenomenon in which a combination of two or more contrasting parts of the whole refer to the whole. For example, in order to say that someone searched everywhere, one could use the merism, searched high and low. Totality is expressed by contrasting parts. Thank you, Wikipedia. 
Basically, the phrase tries to convey everything by listing the opposites in its description, and we fill in the gaps to get the scale of what it's conveying. Now, if we applied this particular usage to lock, shock, and barrel, things get muddy. While it's straightforward to be the exact opposite of one thing, being the exact opposite of two things simultaneously gets confusing. It's like playing rock, paper, scissors with three people. For a winning condition, the two losing players have to show identical in order for one winner to reign supreme by showing their opposite. Otherwise, it's a three-way draw or a two-way draw. And it kind of works for Lock, Shock, and Barrel as they are always vying with each other for the spotlight and have their plan chosen. Would this make Lock, Shock, and Barrel a constantly morphing to be in exact opposition constantly being? Terrifying! But fortunately, a mirrorism also works by counting off several of an object's more conspicuous, not necessarily opposite, parts to refer to the whole object. Totality is expressed by naming off the obvious complementary parts of an object. For example, hook, line, and sinker. The parts are not opposite, but separate, distinct parts of a fishing rod with their own distinct purpose and function. Lock, shock, and barrel's name is a play on lock, stock, and barrel, which are parts of a firearm. Maybe because they are the strong arm of Oogie Boogie's malice while he's trapped below the treehouse? So, from the mirrorism definition, lock, shock, and barrel could each either be extreme opposites of a morphing trio or complementary parts of a trio. The latter makes sense here, the totality by distinct parts usage. But shoot, they kind of tell us they are three of a kind, birds of a feather, now and forever! La, 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 la. And they are known collectively as Oogie's Boys. I don't know, but that's what the mayor says. A singular identity made up of devil, witch, and a kind of skeleton. They're multiple individual identities who are also disguised trick-or-treaters, another singular collective identity. That's their twist for spooking mortals on Halloween, sure, but it adds another layer to what makes them so unique. Now, if Lock, Shock, and Barrel being a creepy, not quite hive mind, but singular purpose now and forever, undying being with three physical manifestations seems like a bit of a stretch, it is. But I had to go there because what if? They would be the most terrifying entity in Halloween Town with the sheer chaos they sow, the high strung never diminishing energy, and their penchant for death inducing stunts. Anyway, moving on to my favorite theory, which I must confess I have saved for the last, for it kind of breaks a lot of bounds. For you see, what if Lock, Shock, and Barrel are not dead at all, not traditional resident spooky city dwellers, but regular kids who like spooky things and just can't be bothered with the real mundane world anymore? Hear me out. They don't seem dead to me like others there. They are not your traditional spookies unless you count an inverse boogeyman as their collective gimmick and identity. They seem to me like regular kids who love pranking, love dressing up, and love living in a spooktacular Never Neverland treehouse. Never growing up or whatever because of the perpetual state of frozen, timeless decay that pervades Halloween Town. So, how did this happen? How do mortal kids find this magical realm of Halloween Town? Well, for starters, the trees seem to be just hanging out in a forest. They are accessible from every holiday land, and Lock, Shock, and Barrel seem like they knew where to set off to when Jack asked them to go to the tree doors to the different realms. Yeah, they mess it up at first, but for all we know, they seem to have known where they were going, generally. Just couldn't remember the right shape, dang it. One issue for me with this is they seem like the type of pranksters who would run amok in all the other holidays, causing massive chaos and confusion with pranks if they knew how to reach them before Jack told them about the doors. Or not, maybe they just like Spooky Land exclusively. Heck, I would. Now here's where things get real world bending fun. Lock, Shock, and Barrel could have found another entrance to Halloween Town through one of the many gravesite passages. Apparently, those are everywhere, as when Jack crash lands into a random cemetery, he is able to open up a grave and poof, he's back home in good old Halloween Town. And unless this tomb door to Halloween Town is a Pumpkin King exclusive power, Lock, Shock, and Barrel strike me as the type of pranksters who would spend a lot of time exploring graveyards and cemeteries for funsies, just hanging out and vibing or pranking and spell casting as you do. If they spent so long in a cemetery, odds are they would have also found a door like the one Jack used, opened it, explored it, and found the spooky land of their perpetual Halloween dreams. Or followed after him one Halloween night, which would explain their costumes. 
To me, this fits. Halloween Town is like Never Never Land for spooky souls, and Lock, Shock, and Barrel can hang out there like the Lost Boys and also Lost Girl Shock in Peter Pan, never growing up, always causing trouble, and annually crossing into the mortal world for some trick-or-treat tricks. It's just a tombstone away, after all. So, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Are they Sackman victims spending their eternal slumber awake and running amok in Halloween Town, growing in power? Are they supernatural beings in their own right? Either connected as a single, terrifying marismic entity, or just best devil, witch, and, uh, barrel friends united in chaos? Or are they simply mortal prankster children with spooky souls who stumbled upon the realm of their wildest dreamy nightmares and decided to stay there forevermore? This world may never know, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm uh, gonna go for a walk in a cemetery, I guess, looking for some shortcut. <laughs> but thank you, friends and fiends, for overthinking Lock, Shock, and Barrel with me. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss the next spooky, creepy thing. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.